I think it was the, um, the challenge of doing something new, but also enhancing myself professionally, but also personally. I felt that I could offer my patients a lot more. Rather than referring or co-managing with a GP, I could do this directly. So I felt that I could uh, offer better service to my patients, and that would not only increase their loyalty to come to see me again, but also I could mean they have better access to medications. Because I work part-time in our casualty unit in a hospital, all my prescriptions had to be checked and verified and signed by an ophthalmologist. And of course, they're kind of busy. They don't always want you hanging outside the door, can you sign this for me? So I was asked to finish IP so that I didn't have to go through that process. I was a little bit jealous having been to an American conference and seen how um, everybody over there is a therapeutic optometrist. I should be able to do that. I can now. That we've got legislation that allows optometrists to do that now. So um, I felt a little bit that there's a shift in optometry to being more primary care healthcare providers. I wanted to um, make sure that I didn't get left behind in that way. In terms of, uh, of getting the IP, there was a, a series of steps that you have to take. It, it, is, it is challenging, it's, it's time consuming. There's the theoretical side, you need to learn uh, the theory behind the prescribing, pharmacology, the different disease entities that you'll come across. So relearning that was, was, very, was really insightful, but also I was very grateful to go through that again because it confirmed that what I was doing was, was, was correct, but also highlight areas of my practice that needed attention. I think it's quite a daunting prospect to become IP trained just because there's, there's university modules. I certainly thought, am I capable still of, of sucking up information in the way I could when I was, when I was 18? Um, and actually it turns out I'm really enjoying it um, and the information is sticking and it's, it's just setting this time aside and, and really concentrating on something. In the old days when we did our, our, our degrees we were just concentrating on the degree. Now you've got a job, You've got kids, and in my case, grandchild. You've got to fit it all in. Finding that little bit of extra time is a problem. And also, when you're knocking on a little bit like me, you have to spend energy doing this work as well. Um, so it's finding that little bit of extra oomph to finish it off. It does take a fair amount of time. Um, and that's, that's one of the barriers to doing it, I think, is the fact that it will take you study time. And once you've qualified with it, are you actually going to be able to use it? Is your employer going to support you? I'm still on the first leg of the journey at the moment, but already I do feel um, like, I'm, like I've levelled up a bit already. I'm actually approaching um, optometry slightly differently, a slightly different outlook already, just from learning what I've learned. It's been fascinating. When I was exposed to, to patients in the hospital setting, I realised there's much more that we could do. From a management perspective, I could see that I could do this myself. So rather than referring, I was much more confident in the fact that, that I would be able to manage these patients fully, uh, and normally fully to resolution, but also on, on a long-term basis, I, could, I was more than capable of monitoring them. I'd like the freedom of doing that. Uh, I feel that I've got enough experience at the moment, but in my view, experience is knowing when to stop, knowing when not to do something and passing that patient on, not being overconfident. On the flip side of that, there's also probably going to be a few sleepless nights when I prescribe my first eye drops. Have I got the diagnosis right? Have I prescribed the right thing? Um, was, it, was it what I thought it was? So there's, there's, there's an increased level of responsibility, which I'm sort of looking forward to, but also a little bit worried about. We're, we're currently at an age where waiting lists are crazy. They're off the scale. So we have to be in a position to reduce those waiting lists to make life easier for the, for the nation in, in general. Uh, hopefully this will be integrated from an undergraduate perspective so when they come out they're ready and able to prescribe. So we truly do become a general practitioner or the, the primary care role of, of the eyes. Not only do we use, make use of our full skills that we've been trained to do, from a wider social perspective we in, improve the access to treatment, we reduce the burden on NHS and our, and our patients get, get better access overall. The scope of optometry is increasing massively. There's the MEX style appointments that are being rolled out, enhanced optical services. So I would say to the optometrists who are either reluctant or not sure what to do, is to embrace this change. In terms of managing a patient, not only will you be able to see them through to resolution, your patient will be eternally grateful to you because you, you, you see them from the start through to the finish. Uh, and that's, 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 that's a tremendously rewarding experience. So I, I certainly suggest going ahead and doing it.